to take a moment to thank the law enforcement agencies from across the country who joined the operations. And I want to continue to thank them as they ensure that, among other things, Canada's border crossings remain open, including in Windsor, and that all communities are safe. We didn't want to use the Emergencies Act. It's never something to turn to without serious consideration. But after weeks of dangerous and unlawful activities, after weeks of people being harassed in their neighborhoods and small businesses forced to close, after billions of dollars were stalled in trade, putting people's jobs and livelihoods at risk, after the National War Memorial was desecrated, after evidence of increased ideologically motivated violent extremism activity across the country, after a flood of misinformation and disinformation washed over Canada, including from foreign sources, after these illegal blockades and occupations received disturbing amounts of foreign funding to destabilize Canada's democracy, it became clear that local and provincial authorities needed more tools to restore order and keep people safe. For the past few days, parliamentarians have been debating the Emergencies Act and will be voting on it tonight. I ask all members of Parliament to take action against illegal blockades and to stand up for public safety and for the freedom of Canadians. Invoking the Emergencies Act has been necessary. Law enforcement agencies relied on it to set up secured areas in downtown Ottawa and at border crossings. It prevented foreign money from continuing to fund illegal blockades. And it's making sure our borders remain open. It has been the responsible thing to do. We now have a choice to make as a society. We can choose to keep reliving these scenes that tear at the values that bind us as Canadians, or we can choose to remember who we are and the best vision of what Canada can be. What we've seen in these past weeks is not the story of this pandemic. The story of this pandemic is one of unity and solidarity. La pandémie, c'est l'histoire des tra... The pandemic is a story about the workers in the health sector who come to work every day, regardless of how tired they are or the difficulties that await them. It's the story of truckers and frontline workers who keep the economy running. It's the story of children and seniors who have remained strong and resilient. We've seen people across the country who have been working together and adapted together to save lives. We've got some of the highest vaccination rates in the world. We've all made sacrifices. And yes, it was difficult. The lives of 36,000 Canadians were taken by COVID-19. These were grandparents, parents, children, friends and neighbours. But throughout it all, we were there for each other. And heartbreak? Canadians answered the call because Canadians are good people. We're among the world leaders in vaccination and health outcomes, as well as in economic recovery and job creation. It took courage. It took resilience. But we did it together. And despite the many challenges that we faced, our democratic institutions remain strong. We don't always agree, and that's okay. In fact, it's not only healthy to have debates in the democracy, it's necessary. Our government will always defend freedom of expression and freedom of peaceful assembly. These values are at the core of our Charter of Rights and Freedoms. They're at the core of who we are as Canadians. In a democracy, you can protest, you can share your opinion at the top of your lungs, you can disagree with elected officials, you can certainly disagree with me, but you can't harass your fellow citizens who disagree with you. 
You can't hold a city hostage. You can't block a critical trade corridor and deprive people of their jobs. You can't attack journalists for reporting, which is essential to our democracy. What you can do is vote. What you can do is run for office. That's how change happens in a democracy. On est tous fatigués de la pandémie. We're all tired of the pandemic, but that doesn't mean you have the right to participate in Ill illegal blockades or occupations or to put others in danger. And it's unacceptable to attack a journalist because they're doing their work or to intimidate people and get in the way of the freedom of the press. There's no doubt that the last weeks have been trying times, but the last years have been painful and that there are still challenges to be overcome. But we can't let anger divide us. More than ever. Now is the time to work together. It's also the time to reflect on the kind of future we want for our country. There's a lesson for all of us in what happened this month. We don't know when this pandemic is going to finally end, but that doesn't mean we can't start healing as a nation. And it starts with all of us. If you spend a lot of time online, try looking outside your social media bubble every now and then. If you have a cousin who you haven't seen in a while because they're unvaccinated or because they're vaccinated, Give them a call. If a political conversation got heated during a recent gathering and a friend or relative left early, pick up the phone. Not to try to convince them, not to argue, but simply to ask how they're doing. Look, in the heat of the moment, we can all get carried away trying to win an argument. But not every single conversation has to be about winning an argument. Sometimes it's more important to just be there for one another. As a country, let's aim for more decency in our public discourse, not less. Let's cherish the democracy that we have and let's commit ourselves every day to working together to make it even better. Merci. Merci, Monsieur le Premier ministre. So, like I said, thank you, Prime Minister. Three minutes of questions, starting with questions in the room. So we have 10 minutes. I would ask you, ministers and the Prime Minister, if you could keep your answers short. That would be greatly appreciated because we have a lot of questions in the room and on Zoom. And for people on Zoom, if you could use the raise hand function to indicate that you have a question, that would be greatly appreciated. Alors, on va commencer avec David Thurton, CBC. We'll start with David Thurton, CBC. Do we still need the Emergencies Act? The blockades have been cleared. Parliament Hill, Hill has been cleared. Do we still need it? As I said, the Emergencies Act is not something to undertake lightly. And it's something that needs to be momentary, temporary, and proportional. That's why every single day I'm receiving briefings and we are reflecting on how much longer the Emergencies Act needs to be in place. We don't want to keep it in place a single day longer than necessary. But even though uh, the blockades are lifted uh, across border uh, openings right now, uh, even though uh, things seem to be resolving very well in Ottawa, this state of emergency is not over. Uh, there continues to be real concerns uh, about the coming days. Uh, but we will continue to evaluate every single day uh, whether or not uh, it is uh, time and we are able to lift this state of emergency. Uh, but I will turn uh, to Ministers Mendicino and Blair, who on this question uh, wanted to say a couple of words. Well, uh, thank you very much, Prime Minister, and thank you for the question. Um, Look, I think there's no doubt that we have seen significant progress here in Ottawa and after uh, three weeks of um, torment uh, for local residents, for small businesses, um, for um, you folks who've been reporting and, um, you know, the 
the images have been shocking and at times and deeply concerning. Um, this morning and yesterday, uh, we saw uh, calm, uh, peace, and quiet. Um, and I think that that was certainly uh, a sense of relief for all of us. But we know that there are still a number of individuals who are affiliated with the illegal blockades who are in the area just this morning. Um, we saw that there's some reports for a potential um, um, activity in the area. So we have to remain vigilant. And not only in Ottawa, um, but at our ports of entry. A couple of days ago, there was an effort to uh, try and block Surrey, an important uh, trade corridor, uh, the Pacific Highway. Uh, we continue to watch very closely activities in Windsor. And we're following the advice of our law enforcement. And I would just point out that that a number of individuals reached out, uh, reach out, including uh, the Canadian Association Chiefs of Police, the Ontario Association Chiefs of Police, the Canadian Association uh, of Police members, who are the rank and file, who have said to us with a very clear and singular voice that the Emergencies Act is a tool. Uh, that is continuing to not only address the illegal occupation here in, Otto in Ottawa, but also being used very effectively to prevent future blockades. Now, I want to um, um, echo exactly what the Prime Minister said, which is, I think, a sentiment that we all share across government, and that is we do not want to use the Emergencies Act for a single moment longer than is necessary. And I believe that when you survey the conduct of um, law enforcement over the last number of days, what you have seen is restraint. I mean, take a look at the way that um, the police carried themselves throughout the course of uh, dealing with the illegal occupation here in Ottawa. There was a degree of professionalism and focus, despite the fact that there was an emotionally charged atmosphere, despite the many provocations and intimidation and, at times, uh, efforts to um, assault uh, police officers. And that, despite all of that, we saw a minimum use of force. So I think that that... Uh, that kind of uh, conduct will continue to carry uh, through the Emergencies Act, but we won't use it uh, for any longer than is necessary. Yes, we have 10 minutes only for questions, and we'll use them all up on the first one. I just want to say the next step, right? Yep. Bill? Yeah. You know, I'll, I'll take your point, David. Um, I think clearly the, the police have, have used and, and the, the measures that we brought forward in the Emergency Act um, appropriately and to, to significant effect. We're pleased with the progress that's being made. We're monitoring on a daily and even hourly basis the threat environment with our senior officials and with law enforcement. And we are committed to, to ending this emergency at, at the earliest opportunity but clearly we're not out of the emergency yet, and, and so we'll continue to monitor that very carefully. Um, I hope that's satisfactory, David. Oui, bonjour, Monsieur Trudeau, Laurence Martin, Radio-Canada. Hello from Radio-Canada. If the act is used in a preventive way, what is the threshold to remove it? Because the truckers could come back in two months, three months, so does that mean we'd have to keep it uh, for another two, three months? Indeed, this is something that we're thinking about. Of course, at some point, once it's lifted, We'll have to remain vigilant as to what could happen afterwards, but we still feel that now, right at this moment, the situation is still fragile. The state of emergency is still there. We're going to continue keeping an eye on this each day and see when we can lift it. Won't be for right away, but every day we're going to reevaluate and we hope that we won't keep it for one day longer than necessary. Bertrand Oliver for CTV National News. My question is for Minister Freeland, I believe. Uh, two Conservative MPs say that their constituents who donated small amounts, about $50 or so, have had their bank accounts frozen. I'm wondering if this is a case of a mistaken use of powers granted to banks under the Emergencies Act, or is the government going after uh, any donor, including small donors? Uh, I'll, I'll turn to Minister Freeland in, in, in a second. But, uh, the measures that we put in place are designed and focused on ensuring uh, that people in the current uh, illegal occupations leave. That has been the intent and the focus right now. If there are uh, specific cases uh, that Conservative ministers can bring forward to highlight uh, where that is uh, is not the case, uh, we would happily uh, look at them and hope to resolve them. But I'll turn over to uh, Minister Freeland. Thank you. Um, yeah, thanks for the question. So first of all, just as the Prime Minister said, particularly right now, um, at a time which is very fraught, 
it's important for all of us to be very, very careful to get our facts exactly right in each circumstance. And I would urge all of us to take that care in every situation. Um, in terms of the financial measures, uh, the RCMP has given to the financial institutions names of leaders and organizers of the protests and of people whose trucks were part of occupations and blockades. That is the only information, according to the RCMP, that the RCMP has given to financial institutions. I think it's also really important for everyone to be clear, and this speaks to the getting our facts straight point, that these measures applied only as of the 15th of February. That is when financial support of these illegal blockades and occupations began to be sanctioned. Uh, and then finally, let me say, uh, for anyone who is concerned that their accounts may have been frozen because of their participation in these illegal blockades and occupation, the way to get your account unfrozen is to stop being part of the blockade and occupation. This is, this, these measures were put in place to disrupt illegal activity in Canada. And, you know, we were very clear last Monday that we would be following the money, that we would be using financial tools to disrupt illegal blockades and occupations. The focus absolutely has been on leaders and on the vehicles that were such an important part of the illegal blockades and occupations. That has been the only focus of law enforcement. Thank you. Bonjour, Monsieur Trudeau. Question, Mr. Trudeau. I'd like to know, are you going to impose the party line for the vote of this night, and what about a vote of confidence? Answer. First of all, I have a hard time imagining that a parliamentarian who votes no to these measures this evening could imagine that it would be something other than showing confidence and trust in the competency of the government. But I have total confidence that the majority of parliamentarians this evening will vote to protect the rule of law and protect Canadians, their communities, and their freedoms. I can imagine that anyone who votes no tonight is doing anything other than indicating that they don't trust the government uh, to make uh, incredibly momentous and important decisions at a very difficult time. But like I said, I am confident that the majority of parliamentarians will stand up to support our values, to stand up to support our democracy, and to stand up to support their fellow Canadians. David Aiken, Global News. Thank you for taking our questions, and thank you for the kind words about supporting our work. I'd suggest the best way to do that, of course, is take an extended amount of time for questions from journalists. <laughs> um, I, I heard what you said in reply to my friend David Thurton, and I heard the very same similar lines repeated by Minister Mendicina, repeated by Minister Blair, where you don't want this to go on for one second longer. I really want to press you. Give us a specific power in the Emergencies Act, which is vital right now, that is not present in the provincial emergency orders, in the criminal code, and in the other number of statutes that already exist. What specifically is in that act that is so vital right now to protect Canadians? We saw for a number of uh, days and weeks into the, the blockades uh, that it was extremely difficult to get tow trucks to come and tow big rigs. One of the specific measures is an ability to compel tow truck drivers uh, to come and do their jobs. Uh, when the Emergencies Act was brought in, many tow truck companies said, okay, uh, we'll do it, didn't need to be compelled, but there were 
some companies that needed to be compelled under the Emergencies Act uh, to remove trucks. And we've seen right now that there are trucks holding in places like uh, Arnprior and Embrun and other places that are uh, have indicated an indication, uh, a desire or an openness to returning to block blockades right now. So that is a power we may, may well need. The power to designate critical infrastructure like border crossings as not just the actual border crossing itself, which of course is protected under current legislation, but the approaches to border, border crossings, 15 kilometers up the road uh, from Coots, for example, or, uh, or uh, the municipal approaches to the Windsor crossing that require uh, police to be able to designate that as areas where people not just occupying, but indicating a desire to go and occupy that inter intersection can be turned away. Just uh, in the past days, there was a convoy from Fort McMurray destined for Ottawa that was largely turned away at the Manitoba-Ottawa border based on the uh, laws and the powers in the Emergencies Act. Now, this is not something that we... Uh, want to imagine continuing indefinitely in Canada. We hope to only keep it in place for uh, a number more days. We will reevaluate every single day. But right now, when the situation is still of people pre-positioning, people uh, being out there indicating that they are ready uh, to blockade, to continue their illegal occupations, to disrupt Canadians' lives, uh, we feel that this measure needs to remain in place while this emergency situation is still in place. And I could give other occasions, but I'll turn to another question instead to try and get as many as possible.